Good afternoon and welcome to Take Your Life Back with Ralph Friedrichs. Today we are going to talk about some scary facts about Halloween and alcohol use. Halloween is this Friday, October 31st. It is also my birthday. I was born on Halloween, trick or treat. And it is also the first day that I write a new chapter in my book of life. This will be chapter 53 starting on Friday. What chapter are you up to and what is written in your chapters in your book of life? Anyway, before we get into all that, what we will do is we will give a shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez. He is at Starting Point at startingpointmn.com. That's S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com. Starting Point's phone number is 844-414-8444. You can also look at his website. Like I said, is www.startingpointmn. The MN stands for Minnesota. Dot com. He has two entities to his business. The first entity is to walk with you from recover from addiction to recovery step by step 24 hours at a time today only and tomorrow he will never ever like myself work on the past or even be concerned about your past we are not counselors and we are not therapists on the other side of his business he can make you an addiction recovery coach like I am or he is if you have passion personality uh, and professionalism and you have some sort of recovery or addiction past, whether it's your own or helping other people, you can become an addiction recovery coach through Dr. Lewis Gonzalez at Starting Point in his program. Reach out to him, 844-414-8444. You can also find my websites, www.clearviews.info. Now, clearviews.info has information on recovery, on addiction, all sorts of information. I also have over almost 200 videos, I think I'm up to 196 right now, videos for you to watch of almost any subject, subjects like today's subject, scary facts about Halloween, uh, Halloween's alcohol uh, usage. So these are all videos that you will find on C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. My other website is also like Dr. Lewis Gonzalez's entity of... Uh, of walking with you from addiction to recovery. I am an addiction recovery coach. My website is clearreform.com. That's C L E A R R E F O R M.com. There, I, like Dr. Lewis Gonzalez, will walk with you step by step, day by day. I will also, like Dr. Lewis Gonzalez, never think about your past or talk about it. We are not counselors and therapists. We want you to get help today and tomorrow. The past is the past. We cannot worry about that. Those are chapters in your book of life that have been written and cannot be changed. But you can start today with your new book, uh, your new chapters in your book of life. And we'll talk about that. But for right now, let's dive right into scary facts about uh, Halloween alcohol usage. So we're going to go right into that. I'm going to read some of this because, uh, again, I did get it off the website. Holidays can be challenging for those in recovery, particularly those who still struggle with obsession to drink or drug. Festivities are often are laced with spiked punches, alcohol, eggnogs, and champagne toasts. Innocent and festive as they may seem to an alcoholic, the dangers are real. The pressures to be joyous and social on holidays when life may be a far cry from Norman Rockwell's portraits that he had painted or a family unity can invite feelings of loneliness. The holidays can stir up sadness or losses that make substance abusers more likely to use to numb uncomfortable feelings. For these reasons, alcohol intervention deals with more than just physical aspects of addiction. It addresses the many psychological and social factors involved, folks. So, again, scary facts about Halloween and alcohol use. Trick or treat. I was born on Halloween. Was I trick or treat? That's it's a joke that I've been asking myself for years. Christmas and New Year's are probably the most problematic holidays, but any celebration where alcohol and drugs are present poses potential risk for you as the alcoholic or the drug abuser or anyone in your family. Halloween, for example, isn't just about trick or treating and bobbing for apples. For teens in particular, this good spirited holiday is rife with dangers. 
Anytime teenagers have the freedom to roam the streets and the night that actually encourages mischief, they can and will get in trouble. On a night costume toddlers filling bags of candy, many adolescents consider alcohol the real treat of the night. Adolescent at risk. Teen drinking on Halloween might seem like a small and innocent subject in the context of hardcore alcohol or drug use. But the reality is, it's, it all starts somewhere, in my case very young. What about your case? And for the teens, seamlessly harmless celebrations and early drinking or drugging can lay the groundwork for future abuse. If you look at the statistics, the use of alcohol by adolescents is troubling. According to an annual survey of U.S. youth, three-fourths of 12th graders, more than two-thirds of 10th graders, and about two in every five of 8th graders have consumed alcohol when youth drink. They tend to drink excessively, often binge drinking, defined as five or more drinks on occasion. In my case, 10 to 15 a day, and that was tremendous, tremendous binge drinking. Where do I fit, you might be asking. Whether a confident jock or an introverted chess player, being a teen is a tough stuff to go through. Self-identity and sense of where one fits in the largest social scheme of peers is taking shape. During the high school and college years, antisocial behaviors, poor self-regulation, poor self-control, anxiety, and tendency towards depression may lead to the use of alcohol as a way to fit in and get along with peers. I dare you, the power peers can and have on one or another occasion been uh, of a I dare you situation. And when it comes to alcohol, that's especially true. Peers who drink often encourage or challenge their friends to do the same. It's true that some amount of experimentation and the risk taken in is important to healthy adolescent development, but alcohol often pushes the element of risk to an unsafe territory. The peer pressure of maybe you have two out of the eight people in the crowd that want to do drugs and alcohol and they dare you to do it. Uh, that uh, can be very tempting, and it probably has for most of us. I know it did in my uh, uh, growing up years, and we need to be uh, aware that we as parents, grandparents, and legal guardians have to be the role model, and we'll talk about that. Environmental hazards. Research also indicates that environmental factors play a role in teen alcohol use. It appears that trying alcohol for the first time is tied more strongly to an environment that presents opportunity, mischief-fueled, night like Halloween, than genetic influences. And a lot of the influences is at home. The Halloween is a crutch right now that we're using to bring out to the surface that there is more during certain holidays. But it all truly, truly starts at your home. What were you thinking? Regions of the brain develop at different times and paces. The region that's responsible for self-control and decision-making is the frontal cortex, which I've mentioned many times in my previous videos. It is not fully developed in adolescence, which is why teens have more questionable judgment and make choices that simply don't make sense or seem at all reasonable to an adult. They are still going through the growing stages. They are still very... Um, uh, in, immature uh, when it not comes to the, just a physical sense but a mental sense. Social awkward. Compared to adults, adolescents are less likely, uh, excuse me, are less affected by certain aspects of intoxication, such as sleeplessness, hangovers, and loss of coordination. This is probably why teens can binge, dr binge drink uh, in ways that adults just cannot. But teens are, however, more sensitive in the way alcohol eases social situations. <clears throat> it is uncomfortable social situations. Teens often drink much to relieve nervousness and generate false sense of confidence. By the time they are alleviated to social anxiety, they may be unable to think or act reasonably or even safely. You don't need to be a helicopter parent but stay involved and stay uh, focused on you being the role model that needs to be done at your home. The NIAA report in underage drinking reports that parents who carefully monitor their teens' activities, who are bonded or close to their teen involved at school or at home, and who are practice effective 
dis disciple are usually more successful in preventing prom drinking for their teens. Now, I, I came up with a Halloween substance abuse comparison and contrast chart. These are comparison and con contrast. On Halloween, people pretend to be someone or something they are not. Drugs alter how a person thinks and feels and can alter one's perception of reality. Kids gather large amounts of candy that can spike uh, blood sugar levels, feed cavity forming bacteria in the mouth, and lead to hyperactivity followed by super crash. Drugs can also increase energy for a time followed by the crash too. Halloween parties are common. Parties with drugs or alcohol are common too. Children or youth often go trick-or-treating with other people. There can be a social aspect to drugs and, um, and drinking. Halloween only occurs once a year. Drugs, drug abuse occurs every day. Parents go out with their younger children to watch them as they trick or treat. Youth secretly take drugs and alcohol. It's even sadder when parents knowingly condone, allow, or enable drug and alcohol use. Halloween generates mucha mula dollars. So do alcohol and drugs. The tagline of Halloween is trick or treat. People who abuse substance pull illegal tricks to get their treats. Halloween can be fun time for families and communities. Substance abuse brings tears, headache, and trouble and heartache also. Do you see the comparisons there? That is what we need to really be careful of. The scary facts about Halloween and alcohol use. Is it trick or treat? Christmas and New Year's are probably the most problem. problem problematic holidays, but any celebration where alcohol and drugs are present poses potential risks. Adolescents are at risk here. Teen drinking on Halloween might seem like a small and innocent subject in the context of hard and more uh, uh, core alcohol and or drugs, but the reality is that it all starts somewhere. It might start with just little Halloween uh, parties. Where do I fit? Whether a confident jock or an introverted chess player, being a teen is tough stuff. To meet the social demands and the peer pressures can be tremendous on your teen, and that's again where you as the role model need to step up. I dare you is constantly in the schools and within your teens. It's the I dare you to drink this, I dare you to puff this, I dare you to snort this. Your teens need to know that they can be an effective teen without being lured into any sort of substance abuse. Again, if you teach your children their chapters in their book of life right from 0 to 18 before they leave the proper way of dealing with society's pressures, they will uh, adhere to that. Environmental hazards. Research also indicates environmental factors play a role in teen alcohol use. It appears that trying alcohol for the first time is tied more strongly to environment that presents opportunity. The environment is at your home, folks. What were you thinking? Regions of the brain develop at different times and pa uh, paces. The region that is responsible is the cortex and, for such, the cortex at a teen's age level has not, yelly, uh, has not uh, really formed yet. Therefore, um, we need to make sure uh, that we educate our children properly right from the beginning. Why, you know, the children absorb most of their information when they're very young. So if you start being the proper role model in the beginning stages of their life, it will show fruitful uh, effects as they even reach the teenage years. Socially awkward. Compared to adults, adolescents are less affected by certain aspects of intoxication, meaning they can drink so much more and still deal with uh, going through uh, lack of sleep, going through um, life itself compared to us as adults. You don't need to be a uh, helicopter parent, but what you do need to be is a role model. You do need to be the person that sets the rules at home for not just your children, but the rules apply to you. If you tell your children not to drink, then you shouldn't be. If you're not to smoke, then you and etc. But we'll address that. Halloween substance abuse comparison and contrast. On Halloween, people pretend to be something or some someone they are not. Well, 
Drugs alter how a person thinks and feels and can also alter the perce perception of reality. Kids gather large amounts of candy and can spike blood sugar levels, feed cavity forming bacteria in the mouth and lead to hyperactivity followed by your sugar crash. Well, drugs can also increase energy for a time followed by the same crash. Halloween parties are common. Well, parties with drugs and alcohol are also common. Children or youth often go trick-or-treating with other people. Well, there can be a social aspect to drugs and drinking. Halloween only happens once a year. Well, drugs and uh, alcohol abuse happens every single day. Parents go out with their younger children to watch them as they trick-or-treat. Well, youth secretly take drugs and alcohol. It's even sadder when parents knowingly condone it and allow it and enable it in their own home as bad role models. Halloween generates mucha mula. Well, so does alcohol and drugs. The tagline of Halloween is trick or treat. Well, people who abuse substance uh, pull illegal tricks to get their treats. Halloween can be fun time for families and communities. Substance abuse brings tears, headache, heartache, and trouble. Nothing but negativity. That is the scary, or those are the scary facts of Halloween and alcohol use. So a lot of it comes right down to, and that is the role model in your home. If you set standards, you as the parent and the grandparent and the legal guardian have to apply your own um, rules to yourself as to your children or your grandchildren. You should never ever do these four things in your home. One is never ever smoke. Number two is never ever drink. Number three is never ever use profanity. And number four is never ever, and not just in your home, but ever anywhere, use physical violence. Those four should never be used and that will help you become a better role model. If you need to smoke, do it outside. If you need to drink, do it outside. If you need to use that bathroom trash mouth language, utilize it outside your home. And if you for some reason have a anger issue and you resort to physical violence, you need therapy and counseling. Go call and seek that. If you're the victim of physical violence, you need to call the authorities, call 911. It is better to have your loved one who has some anger issues being taken out in handcuffs, taken away and hopefully get treatment and come back to you one day a better person, than for you to have the authorities come to your house and take you, yes you, out in their body bag, because that's irreversible, you'll never come back. Those four things need to be eliminated at home. Smoking, drinking, profanity, and physical abuse. These four things have to be in your home. Love, respect, compassion, and emotion. You need to show love to your children, to your spouse, your grandparents, whoever in your home. You need to show respect because when you give respect, you get respect. You need to show compassion and emotion. So if you add those four things and eliminate the other four things, you are becoming a better role model. Remember the book of life. It's funny because last day we took our grandkids and we saw the movie A Book of Life. And it's what goes into your book of life, those chapters that are written, like my chapter starts again, my new chapter on Halloween, on my birthday, chapter 53 starts in my book of life. Your chapters that you need to help your children write as a good role model is between zero, their birth, and, and 18 when they leave. It is your responsibilities to co-write those chapters with your children. Those chapters should include love, respect, emotion, and compassion. Those chapters should never include, I saw my mommy drinking, I saw my daddy smoking, I saw my parents physically fighting or verbally, and I heard them uh, cursing at each other. Those should never be in there. But if you co-write your children's chapters in their book of life, 0 to 18, you are preparing your children for society because society out there is so terrible that if you do the four things that I'm telling you not to do, if you do smoke, drink, profanity, and physical abuse in front of your children, they will be so ready for society because that's what society does. They'll blend right in. They will not stand out. They will not be prepared 
for a good life, you have then created what society wants uh, you to create, and that is someone that is going to uh, be uh, not in the form that God created that child. When God created all of us, he created us to be good. It is our own decisions and our own mistakes that make us go off that path. Be involved in your children's life. Show your children that you do have love, respect, emotion, and compassion for them. Show your children, show your children that you don't need to smoke, drink, use profanity, or physically abuse anyone. And then continue writing your own chapters in your book of life. Write your own chapters in your book of life each and every day. Your chapter should include all those four things that you should be doing for your children and should not include the four things that you shouldn't be doing in front of your children. If you are at a point where you finally had enough and you feel that you want to start a fresh start with maybe no alcohol and drugs, let today be that first day. All you need to do is to finally admit you have a problem and when you have done that, also reach up to your higher power. Ask God for guidance and direction. Let him help you. Remember, you wouldn't be in the predicament that you are right now, where it seems like your whole life is crumbling around you, if you're able to write your own chapters. If you were able to do that, your life would be perfect. But if your life is crumbling around you and you know you have an alcohol and drug addiction, then reach for your higher power. Once you have done that and you admit it and you reach for your higher power, you need to come up with an action plan on how to, to learn to live with, uh, with your addiction, how to go daily with your addiction. Why well, I always tell people the first thing is, is you only do one day at a time. It works and it works great. And if one day seems like a long time, because 24 hours is a long time, break it up into three eight-hour shifts or four six-hour shifts or even one, one hour at a time. But whatever it takes, don't try to go further than 24 hours at a time. I have to sneeze. <sighs> if you don't go further than 24 hours at a time, you'll be so much better off. <sighs> oy, oy, oy. That time of the year, October. But that's what you need to do. Come up with an action plan. An action plan would include different methods of seeking sobriety. Those methods can include AA. AA has the 12-step program. What people prefer in AA that if you first become sober, is you do the 90-90. 90 days and 90 meetings, or 90 meetings and 90 days. They want you to follow the 12-step program. They want you to seek a sponsor. You will show up about an hour, hour and a half each day. That is AA. They've been around since 1936 and they've helped millions of people. I did try AA and for me it just wasn't active enough. I needed to be a lot more involved. Excuse me why I take a sip of soda. So I created www.clearviews.info. When I first created this website, my intentions were only to post things about addiction and recovery. Never ever did I know that God was going to help me write a new chapter in my book of life. Never ever did I think that God was going to introduce me to Dr. Louis Gonzalez from Starting Point. Those all just came along, but it all started with my website, clearviews.info. That website has grown into another website, into almost 200 videos, into all the social networks, uh, uh, seeing my website and bringing traffic to me. The, it has included also doing live interviews. It has included being mentioned on certain shows, but it all started with clearviews.info. So my point is, folks, is that AA works for a lot of people, but I needed to be more actively involved. I like to say it this way. When you graduate college and you go and get a job, you will never get enough training to do that job 100% from the books. You won't. You will get the best training for that job as you do that job over and over. Repetition. Well, when I created clearviews.info, I dove actively from day one into every day fighting my addiction.
It all started maybe with only a couple hours a day and it has grown to about anywhere from five to eight hours daily that I either talk about it, videotape it, create it, do interviews, answer emails and chats. That is my way of actively staying involved in my own recovery. I have come to the point where after I met Dr. Luis Gonzalez and he put me through his educational program for addiction recovery coach to be an addiction recovery coach. I am out here to help people. For all those Sundays I went to Mastic Beach on Neighborhood Road, I provided my services pro bono uh, for two reasons. One reason is for my um, uh, educating myself on how to deal with people, how to talk to people, but also an uh, experience. I wanted to have the experience under my belt. Second reason is because the people on Mastic, in Master Peach on Neighborhood Road really do not have the funds. These are the people that are standing on food lines. These are the people standing by the church waiting for a loaf of bread. How in good conscience can I charge them to give them that something that I have created for free on my own, which was my own method? So that's what I have been doing, and that's what I will be doing. I didn't do it yesterday, Sunday. Uh, the weather was a little chilly, very windy, so I didn't do it. But I will be back on the streets next week, Neighborhood Road, Mastic Beach, between 11 and 12 next Sunday. But that is my method. My methods truly work. Just go to www.clearviews.info, www.clearreform.com. Go Google me, Yahoo me, tweet, Facebook, dig, dogpile, Lycos. These are all uh, uh, websites where the sites that have my website ask. It, it's out there for you for the taking. Look how I started in recovery and how I've blossomed. That can be you. So you have AA, you have my methods, you have treatment centers. If you go to my website, www.clearviews.info, you will find uh, between pages uh, 6 and 8, you'll find all 50 states rehab centers and treatment centers just click on your state and you'll find something and if you don't see something that's nearby you go to google in the search bar just type in treatment center substance abuse treatment center and their location and you will find there if you go into a treatment center due to 30 60 90 day programs they take insurance they take medicaid and sometimes in your state, if you don't have either of them, you can find uh, free services. And if you still have a problem, text me at 631-599-0218. I will try to help you with finding something somewhere. You can email me at clearreform, that's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M, at Yahoo also. But even if you used AA, you used my methods, you used the treatment center, or any other method, when... Those methods you seem are exhausted, they will never be exhausted because you need to continuously, 24 hours at a time, for the rest of your life, educate yourself on addiction recovery. If you don't do that, you will fall back off. You will start drinking or using drugs again. It is a day by day for the rest of your life responsibility to educate yourself on addiction recovery, folks. And when you come out of the treatment center, or if you walk out of AA, or if you go look at my website and you finish my website, don't ever, ever go back into your old ways again. Never, ever do that. If you fall and you have a relapse, it's okay. You're human. Pick yourself up, start all over again. If you stayed sober for a week and you had a drink and you feel bad, it's okay. Start again. On the positive side, you just gained a whole week of sobriety, which is a lot more than a lot of people that don't even try. So I say congratulations for whatever time you have been sober. My hope for you and my wish for you is for continuous sobriety for the rest of your life. But that is all up to you. Our goal, no matter which method you use, is sobriety. The end goal is sobriety. Doesn't matter how you get there, doesn't matter what your methods are, what does matter is that you're sober at the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the month, and at the end of your life. 
That is what's important. When you go to bed tonight and you push your, you take your shoes, sneakers or, or slippers off and you put them by the edge of your bed, tonight push them under your bed. You might say, Ralph, why is that? I'll tell you why. Because tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're going to have to go drop to your knees to go un pull them from underneath your bed and so you can put them back on your feet. And while you're on your knees, thank God that you're on this earth for another day. Thank the Lord for that. Because for every breath you take, there is someone globally or in your own community taking their last breath. For every time you open and close your eyes, there's somebody globally or in your community closing your eyes for the last time. Thank God that you not only have another day on this beautiful earth, but thank God if you're sober that you have another day of sobriety under your belt. And then thank God if you're the household uh, uh, role model, if you're the mother, the father, the grandparent, that God gives you the strength to teach your children the proper ways of living life, to give you strength to co-write their chapters in their book of life from 0 to 18. Thank God for the strength. Thank God each and every day that your children look at you as their hero. And if you are being looked at as, as your children's hero and you are doing nothing but drinking, smoking, profanity, ask God for guidance and direction. Ask Him to help change your ways. What you are creating, if you're doing that smoking, drinking, profanity, physical violence in front of your children, what you're creating is a future that's so bleak for your children. If you don't have the will to do it for yourself, do it for your children. Our children are our future. What you put into them is what you get out of them. When you don't show respect, you're not going to get respect. I am asking you today to start writing a new chapter in your book of life. No matter what chapter it is, if you're 40, it's chapter 40. In my case, it's going to be chapter 53. I am now closing up chapter 52 in my book of life. I hope to pr and pray daily that I reach possibly 90 chapters. But for each chapter in each year that I get continuous life here on earth, I know one thing, that I will be sober with God in my heart. That I know. When my day comes, like yours, and we all will have a day eventually, I will be remembered as a person that had a total transformation from what I was. And it's never too late to do that. The only time it's too late is if you can't do it because you don't exist. If you're watching me, listening to me, you still have a chance to change. Just when I thought I went down the wrong path in life, and there was no turning around. Out of nowhere, I was able to change. And so can you. But it all starts in here and in your heart. You need to let the sunshine into your heart and into your home, and you will get nothing but positive results. You need to eliminate the negative people around you. If you have a major drug or alcohol addiction and people are pointing fingers at you and saying that you're no good, you're worth nothing, folks, I'm telling you right now, in God's eye and in my eye, you are a special person that has a disease called addiction. You are a special person. You need help. You are crying for help. And I am here to help you. Dr. Luis Gonzalez from Starting Point is here to help you. Millions of other people are here to help you. But it all starts with you. It starts with you finally saying you need to help. When you do that and you reach up to God and you let God into your life, you will see changes that will make your head spin. Physical changes, financial changes, emotional changes, relationship changes. The list keeps going. But it all starts with you. You need to open your heart. Let God's sunshine into your heart and into your home. And when you do that, you'll be amazed. I just want to give a shout out. I spoke to, or I uh, text or private messaged a special friend of mine that I've known for many years. We worked together many, many, many years ago. And I want to congratulate her. She's down in Virginia. 
I'll pinpoint it to the, I don't want to say the name, but I'll pinpoint the city, Hopewell, Virginia. She has come such a long way, and two special things have happened in her life. And I just want to congratulate her. She knows about the one thing. And I am so proud on how she looks. A total reformed person. And I know with the love of God, and she uses God as her personal guidance and director, I know that he has turned her as well as helped me in my life. And I just want to congratulate her. I am so proud of her. And I know that she knows who I'm talking about. So congratulations and keep going. And I hope my wife and I come to see you soon. So maybe we can get to meet each other's spouses. You and I know each other, but we don't know each other's spouses. So let's do it. I want to give a shout out to my friend up north. Um, I'm not sure where you stand with your addiction. I wish you'd give me a little, I don't know, email or text here and there. I'm a little concerned for you. But I will not, and I repeat, I will not harass you about it. It is up to you to contact me. I want to help you. From my friend up in New Hampshire, I hope things are going better for you and your family. I can only hope and pray they are. Reach out if you need to talk to me. For all my friends down south, God bless each and every one that has even attempted Maybe not succeeded, but even attempted to fight alcoholism or substance abuse. If you don't succeed, it only means one thing. It has happened to me six or seven times that you are just not ready. Sometimes it takes the whole world to crumble around you to make you realize it's time to give up. You cannot beat addiction, but you can learn to live with it. But you cannot beat it. The devil cannot be beat, which is addiction. But you can learn to live with it by accepting God into your life. Let him guide and direct you. He will work around the devil. Don't even worry about your addiction then. Worry about reaching out to him and worrying about how you will daily fight your addiction. And it is a daily struggle. There's not one minute, I shouldn't say one minute, there's not one day where any alcoholic or any person that has substance abuse will tell you that they don't think about their old ways. I do. And if it's not me thinking about it, it's other people bring it to my attention, but that's okay. Because the reformed me or the reformed you has one thing right now that is worth more than anything in life itself, and that is called hope. You hope to make another day daily. And as long as you have that hope in your life and God in your life, the future looks so positive, so full of sunshine, that all darkness and negativity just crumbles around it. You are special no matter who you are. If you're a crackhead, you are special. If you're a pothead, you are special. If you're an alcoholic, you are special. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You just have a problem that needs help. Deep down inside, you are a good person. God only created good people. It is when people took their own lives into their own hands that has created chaos. Now is the time to realize that you have a problem and the time to reach out to God and you will notice differences. I promise you. Folks, I am here 24-7 via text, 631-599-0218. Text me. Tell me what you want to see on future shows. Tell me how you feel. Tell me how I can help you. Go on my Facebook. I have two pages, Clear Reform and Clear Views. And I also have an open group with about 250 members, Clear Reform. You can find me on Google and Yahoo. Ask all those places. Go to my website, clearviews.info, for almost 200 videos. That's C-L-E-A-R. V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O or Clear Reform, that's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M. You can find me on both those locations. Dr. Luis Gonzalez is here also to help you. Call him at 844-414-8444. He will help with your addiction. He will walk with you and I will help take your life back. That I promise you. I took my life back I know what it takes to take my life back, so I know how to take your life back. It takes two things. Your acceptance that you have a disease, stop denying it, 
and your acceptance of your higher power. With those two things, the rest I can do for you, and that is to build a structured game plan for your future. Again, folks, today is a beautiful day here in the Hamptons, Long Island. It's a beautiful day with a lot of sunshine that I'm letting into my heart and into my home so I can continuously get nothing but positive results. I will not let the naysayers, I will not let the negative people tell me I am not good because I am good. I know you're good. No matter what you've done, it can be changed. No matter who you've hurt, it's the past. You can't change that. You can amend that by going back and apologizing. But let today, October 28th, 2014, be the first day of your new life, of the first day of your life that you so desperately want back. I will help you take your life back. Leave the old life behind. Just leave it behind. A sober today makes for a better tomorrow. And if you believe what I'm telling you in your heart and in your head, it will become clear in your home. Let the sun shine in. That's all I have to really say because you will get nothing but positive results. Before I go, congratulations to my friend in Hopewell. I am so proud of you and I wish you nothing but the best of luck. And remember folks, I am here to help you take your life back. Have a sober day, but more important, have a sober weekend. God bless you.